All right, hello everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I am Mark, aka Stock Market Jobber. People are like, what does stock market jobber even mean? Well, in the old days, like the 1700s, a stock market jobber was someone who was basically the equivalent of a modern day market maker on the London Stock Exchange. They'd be like, all right, your job is you're a stock market, you're a stock market jobber. You do work on the stock market. Your stock market jobber. But the reason why I find the term kind of interesting is because here at stockmarketjobber.com, we do a lot of stuff about history. And when the whole Hamiltonian and Jeffersonian debate went on when the country was founded, the Jeffersonians, who basically, frankly, were wrong about the future of the country, uh, they would insult the Hamiltonians, who were people that understood the future of the country, and understood modern finance. So they use stock market jobber as a derogative term. And so I think that's where it's kind of funny, and it, and it came from it. And it turns out the Hamiltonians are right. So anyway, I just want to talk about two things tonight. I want to talk about Tupperware, and I want to talk about yellow. Because they're each going nuts, but they're each very different. Okay? Now, I think Tupperware is just going to reverse. I think this is going to be easy money. Um, the Reddit crowd is always wrong. It's the Reddit crowd that's driving this up. Okay, so here we have Tupperware. You can see on my chart here. So this stock has gone from sixty-two cents to closing price today is five thirty-eight. That's a seven hundred and sixty percent return. Okay, now. Why did we run into resistance? Well, as stock market jobber, what we do is look at important levels, trends, and momentum. That's what institutional traders do. I spent two decades in the institutional trading world. I was the head of trading at like 12 or 15 different hedge funds. I was the head of trading in so many different hedge funds, I don't even remember. And, and all you retail traders think like, oh, hedge funds, this, hedge funds, that. They're really not as interesting or exciting as you would think. I actually ran to one of my friends a while ago, probably about, I don't know, 10 months ago last fall, who was the head of, he was a big shot market maker, Goldman Sachs. And we're like, oh, what are you doing? I mean, he's retired. You know, he's like 50. He's younger than me. He's retired. Um, but I was telling him, like, I'm now, I'm in this retail world now as a teacher. And it's just amazing how there's so much misinformation about what hedge funds do, what market makers do. And he was a market maker. And what really struck me as funny was he said, man, you know, if like these people came to work with me when I was a market maker, Goldman Sachs, by like 10 o'clock in the morning, they'd be ready to go home they, because they would be so bored. All right. Anyway, here is Tupperware. Where did Tupperware run into resistance? Where did the sellers come out of the woodwork? Oh, what a surprise. At a level that was support before. At a level that was resistance before. This black line is 550. A lot of times there is support or resistance at former levels that were support or resistance. In this case, it's resistance. Why there's support here? Why would there be resistance here? There's people who bought here who are like, man, they thought they were these, these great traders. They thought they were Stephen Cohen, you know, Mark Wenham. But when the price went lower, a lot of these people tell themselves, man, I made a mistake. I want to get out, but I'm only going to get out of break even. I'm going to hold on my shares until I get out of break even. So there's all these people that bought around 550 when it was support. And we get up to 550 again, and it becomes resistance. Well, guess what? A lot of the people who bought back there are just like, all right, I can get out of break even. So I'm going to do so. So they put out their sellers. And if there's enough sellers, this creates resistance. When a market is moving higher, there's not enough resistance, or I should say, sorry, there's not enough supply to fill all the demand, so the buyers have to pay premiums. When we get to a resistance level, all of a sudden, there's enough supply, the buyers can buy all they want. There's also resistance back here in November at 550. It's kind of the same thing. There's people who bought back here who want to sell and get out of break even. Buyer's remorse. So buyer's remorse can turn what was support into resistance. Buyer's remorse can make resistance stay intact for a while. I don't even know what to say. Okay. 
I, you know, and please don't sue me. I mean, you can whatever the hell you want. I'm protected under the First Amendment here, at least for now. But training against the Reddit crowd is like shooting fish in a barrel. They're always wrong. The Reddit crowd drove this up from fifty cents to five dollars and fifty cents for nothing. There's no news. There's nothing that could possibly justify this move. One of my students asked me today, like, oh, 110 million shares of traded. Doesn't this mean retail? Or, I mean, doesn't it mean the institutions are getting into it? No, it doesn't. Nothing has changed since the stock was 50 cents two weeks ago other than investor perceptions. No big institution, no hedge fund, at least none of the ones I ever worked for, no hedge fund, no mutual fund, no institutional money management firm is going to go buy a stock that's worth 50 cents. You, you can't even do that. If you're managing $2 billion and you want to put 2% of your assets into an investment, that's $40 million. You can't buy $40 million of a stock that's trading for 60 cents. You just can't do it. And also, your clients are going to say, hey, why the hell are you buying a stock that's garbage? That's a penny stock. Anyway, let me go back to this. Despite all the noise, despite this, despite that. And I remember when I was a kid, my mother used to have Tupperware parties, frankly. Back then, it was like, oh, Tupperware party. I'm 53. I'm going to be 54. Make money, send me a gift. I don't care what it was. Actually, you know what? If I help you make money, give money to a charity that that works, you know, and not even in my name, but in the name of whatever. Dogs, animals, guinea pigs, people resistance becomes resistance in this is my experience if a stock makes a move like this and there's no news that drives it it's just a reddit thing it is going to reverse it's almost the most consistent thing i've ever seen in my 25 years in the stock market maybe it goes higher but my bet is this in two weeks, this stock will be lower than $5. There's nothing in the fundamental world that can justify how this company has gained 500% of valuation other than for some reason they got caught up in the, the meme world or the Reddit world, all right? So look at some put options. I would be very comfortable with buying the $4 puts out two weeks, the $3 puts out two weeks, I would be very surprised, and I've been surprised before. I'm not perfect. I, you know, I would be very surprised if this stock is not lower in a week or two. All right, that's Tupperware. Total meme thing. Now, let's look at yellows. This is another meme thing, but this is a little different. This is the trucking company that has said that they've gone, you know, they're declaring bankruptcy. It currently has a market capitalization value. The, the value of the company. 91 million dollars okay if you took all the shares that are outstanding and the price the value of the company is 91 million dollars now think about this this is a company that owns trucks they own land they own distribution centers they have value i don't basically they said they were bankrupt because they couldn't meet the pension obligations I don't know what the contracts are. I don't know what they got to pay. I know union workers are basically entitled and they think they deserve stuff they don't. So anyway, you know, whatever. A few union guys, I've been hearing about a few Wall Street guys for a long time. Guess what? I used to leave my house at six in the morning and I would get home at midnight. I worked my ass off. I used to see these union guys. It's like, oh, coffee break time, lunch break time. Guess what? I never took a lunch break in my 25-year career. We would eat lunch at the desk. So I don't really, I'm not sorry. I'm sorry you went to the well too much. Very interesting, though. Resistance here around four. Where do we find resistance here around four? Now, I think what happened was that this company got in such a low valuation. Think about it. It's up six. It's up 600%. Market cap is $90 million. The market cap is like $10 million when it was at its low down here. They got value. How much are those trucks worth? How much is the land worth? 
How much are your trailers worth? How much are your tractors worth? If the value of all those assets is worth more than the valuation of the stock, guess what? Buying the stock is basically free money. I think a couple, now, unlike Tupperware, which is a complete Reddit thing, I think some institutions have probably come in here and said, hey, this is free money, you know? This company's got a billion dollars worth of assets. If we sold all the trucks, we sold all the factories, we've got a billion dollars, we've got two billion dollars, we've got three billion dollars. We could acquire this company for a market capitalization of $91 million. So this is a company that has assets. That's that's why I think this is a difference between this and Tupperware. And of course, I could be wrong. I'm no genius. I'm no superstar. I've just been doing this a long time. Tupperware going down, yellow, probably could continue going higher. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I got to get going. My wife is yelling at me. It's time for dinner. I will talk to you soon. Make sure you come back.